in uh, in uh, community level selection the uni the unit of selection is a community and the mutation can be seen as the ensemble of mutation of all the species it's a kind of coarse grain mutation and we then select a community level property such as its biomass or its diversity that is related to its sort of uh, fitness so it's a community fitness so the question we asked was uh, how do the interactions evolve in a species rich community subject to selection of its total abundance so our model is uh, the following it is sketched here so uh, the big blue circles are the community and so we start with a, we have a fixed number of community here uh, called uh, small n and so here small n equal to four and so the individuals are represented by the tokens and the color of the tokens represent the different species and so we start with different communities so because they are different they have a different ecological equilibrium so we wait for these communities to reach their equilibrium and then uh, when they are at equilibrium uh, we select the one that has the higher total abundance that is to say the highest number of individuals so we kill all the other and we reproduce. so here we just make a copy paste uh, of the selected one to get back the initial number of communities but then to have evolution, we want to have some uh, variability. So we introduce mutation of uh, interaction. So I will describe this later. And so then, because interaction have changed, uh, the ecological equilibrium is not the same anymore. So we again wait um, uh, the communities to reach their ecological equilibrium. Uh, and so we have our second gener generation and we can again select the one that has the higher uh, total abundance. So in more detail, so it is a theoretical work. And so we, we decided to model the ecological dynamic uh, with the well-known load character equation. So in our notation, S is the number of species and Ni is the abundance of the species I. And so the equation say that the derivative of the abundance is equal to itself times an effective growth rate that depends on a constant that is the carrying capacity and some interaction terms. So we hear alpha Ij uh, representing the interaction from the species J to the species I. And so in this notation, alpha ij negative accounts for beneficial interaction whereas alpha ij positive accounts for deleterious interaction and so the total abundance that is the quantity we want to select uh, is denoted uh, n of t and is just the sum over i of v and i and as i say we want to work with species rich community so with a large number of species s but initially, we have to, to choose uh, some interaction, and uh, we can't choose them for a large number of species. So we used the disordered approach, that is to draw interaction as random variables. So we choose to draw them with a Gaussian distribution, uh, with a mean equal to mu divided by the number of species, and the variance equal to sigma square divided by the number of species. And we choose to have no correlation between alpha ij and alpha ji. So here, mu and sigma uh, are uh, parameters. And with the, the, uh, this choice, uh, it is known that in the, in the limit s going to infinity, so the limit of large number of species, 
uh, the total abundance at equilibrium depends only on mu and sigma. Uh, so here is a contour plot of the uh, log of the total abundance at equilibrium in the space uh, mu in the excess axis and sigma in the y axis. And so we see here that uh, if you decrease mu and if you increase sigma, the total abundance at equilibrium will uh, raise. So starting with this interaction, uh, it is not enough to uh, have an evolution. For evolution, we need to have some variability. So at each generation, we introduce mutation of the interactions for all species. And so for us, the mutations are just small, random, unbiased perturbation of the full interaction matrix alpha. And what I mean by unbiased is that in the absence of selection, so with just mutation and with no selection, uh, we need that uh, mu and sigma uh, are statistically preserved, such that uh, because the total abundance at equilibrium uh, for a random matrix is only uh, defined by mu and sigma, uh, if we don't select the total abundance, it will statistically not change, but it can have a, a fluctuation from a finite size effect. So with this, I'll show you uh, our uh, numerical simulation of this model. So here are uh, some simulation with uh, 100 species uh, with uh, 10 communities and some random carrying capacity. And the plot here represents the evolution of the abundance of, of all species in gray uh, with the generation. And in blue, we have the evolution of the mean abundance that is proportional to the uh, total abundance. That is the quantity uh, we select. And so what we can see is that selection leads to an increase in uh, total abundance and globally an increase in uh, every abundance of every species, except for some species that uh, goes extinct. And then after a certain number of generation, uh, some abundance eventually diverge, but this is a limit of the load Cavalterra model. And so uh, my main question was to see how the interaction change under the uh, under uh, artificial selection for the uh, total abundance. So for that, at every generation, uh, we look at the statistic of the interaction matrix. So if we compute the empirical mean and variance of the interaction matrix alpha at a generation two, we can get back this parameter mu and sigma that are presented before. That has, so mu is basically the mean of the interaction and sigma is basically the sigma square is the variance of the interaction. And so we see here that mu in blue here uh, decreases with the generation. So the interaction became more mutualistic and that sigma increases. So the interaction become more diverse. And to understand this uh, with, uh, uh, to understand why is it so, we can compare this with, uh, with Gaussian interaction of the same statistic. So in the beginning, I showed you a contour plot of the total abundance, the log of the total abundance of a random Gaussian, oh, sorry, I showed you a contour plot of the total abundance at equilibrium of a community that has an interaction matrix random of parameter mu and sigma. So the surface face in this plot is uh, the same plot as I showed you in the space mu, sigma, and the log of the total abundance. Uh, and then I superposed to this surface the, the trajectory 
of our numerical simulation. That is, uh, each point is at a certain generation. We measure the, the empirical mu, the empirical sigma, and the uh, total abundance. And the, the white curve is just the projection of this curve on the surface. And so what we can see is that uh, the fact that mu decreases and that sigma increases uh, is in agreement with the fact that the total abundance increases because the surface has this, sorry, has this direction. But what is obvious is that the observed total abundance is significantly higher than the one we would predict with the, with the random matrix of parameter mu and sigma. So something else is happening. And to understand what's happening, we can look at the coefficient of the interaction matrix at the end and at the beginning of the simulation. So here is the coefficient of the interaction matrix sorted by decreasing capa carrying capacity, such that the coefficients in the upper left are the species with the highest carrying capacity. And so at the beginning, there is no structure because the matrix is just random. And at the end, we see that there is a kind of structure. Uh, the species that became the more, most mutualistic are the one with the strongest carrying capacity. And so I run a bit out of time, I think. So uh, to understand um, what kind of structure, uh, to understand the structure, we can look at the eigenvalue of uh, this matrix. So here, here's in the, in the upper plane, we have the eigenvalue of the matrix at the first generation. And so they are all distributed uh, in a circle of radius sigma. And there is the blue eigenvalue that is uh, equal to mu. And at the end, uh, we see that there is an extra, eigen, an extra green eigenvalue. And if we plot this with the generation, we see that after a hundred of generation, this uh, eigenvalue appears and decreases linearly with the generation. And so this eigenvalue is responsible for the structure. And so it is also responsible for the excess of total abundance. So to conclude, uh, we studied the evolution of interaction when selecting the total abundance. And interaction became less competitive and more diverse following an increase of the total abundance. They also became structure enabling to reach a higher function, so a higher total abundance than with purely random interaction. And the signature of this structure is an isolated eigenvalue associated to an eigenvector correlated with the carrying capacity. And so uh, if you want to find out more about this model, everything is uh, in uh, our preprint. But what I can briefly say is that, is that this structure corresponds to the most likely one given the observed abundance and mean interaction. And we got, a, we have a recursive equation for the total abundance and the interaction matrix that is hard to solve in general, but some limit case give a good understanding. And uh, this result are expected to hold for a broad class of community function. Thank you.